Hi, my name is Vince Stevie. I'm an FAE at Micrell. Today I'm going to talk about the Super Switcher 2 family of regulators that we've recently introduced. I'm going to go into a couple technical details to show you how this part outperforms a traditional PWM. We'll talk about the adaptive on time controller. We'll also talk about the, uh, the hyperspeed control that this part can do. The third thing we'll talk about is how these two things in combination make the part any capacitor stable. So I'm going to go take a look at a few foils. So before we go into the Super Switcher 2 family of products and talk about its features, let's first understand what a basic buck regulator looks like. Uh, this is a simple buck regulator here meant to convert 12 volts down to 1.2 volts. To do this, it runs a control circuit in here at a duty cycle of 10%. It's just a V out over V in ratio. And what happens is that the uh, control circuit turns on power and energizes the inductor. Inductors act much like sponges, absorbing energy and then delivering it to the output capacitor where it's available for your output loads. So this circuit turns on and the feedback node comes up to a, a point of regulation at which point the high side switch opens and current is allowed to circulate through this freewheeling diode on the low side. This process is repeated at a 10% duty cycle, so we attain regulation on the output. Another type of regulator is a synchronous buck regulator. Synchronous buck regulators basically get rid of the diode that was in place here on the freewheeling area and replace it with a MOSFET. So now instead of a voltage drop, we just have the RDS on drop of that low side MOSFET. And what happens here? is we just run switches 180 degrees out of phase with each other. This makes a more efficient switcher. Let's take a look at a traditional PWM. How is it affected by load transients? In this example I'm showing a 1 amp output jumping suddenly to 6 amps. The uh, pulse width modulator on the high side switch continuously kicks along running as a pulse width modulator, but the output voltage cannot keep up because the pulse width modulator doesn't send another pulse until it decides that it should. Um, this is how it's a little bit different when we go into a Super Switcher 2. Now let's look at that. This is a, a Super Switcher 2. And in this Super Switcher 2 I'm showing the same load transient, but what we end up doing is we have an on-time estimator in our Super Switcher 2 family that estimates the on-time based on the V-in and the V-out. And then it adjusts the dead time or the off time as the load changes. So you'll see right here, we're going along as a normal PWM, but when there's a load step, we throw a couple extra pulses in to catch up. What that does to the output voltage is it will not dip as much. So this makes for a very fast switching regulator where you don't have to have a lot of extra inductance and capacitance on the output. Now I want to talk a little bit about something called uh, any capacitor stable. And what this is, is we call the Super Switcher 2 family any capacitor stable. Um, as you know, when you build a circuit, you build your switching regulator circuit to power up all the stuff like microprocessors, FPGAs, and other things. But when the board's laid out, bulk capacitance is added out there. As you add all this capacitance, it can start to make your switcher unstable. One of the first things you'll notice when you start to look around the uh, Super Switcher 2 family is there is no compensation pin on the part. So we do not need any compensation pin. Rather than compensation, what we do is ripple injection. You take a little bit of the switch node noise and you inject it onto the feedback. I've shown it here this way because this is assuming that your output capacitor is a ceramic cap, which is the case in most of today's designs. And with a ceramic cap, the ESR is so low there is no output ripple. So you can't get any ripple in on the feedback node. What you do is you inject a little switch node noise onto the feedback. You want to try to keep this around 20 to 100 millivolts of ripple fed in on the feedback. And when you do that, now as your board layout person goes out and adds capacitors, uh, there's more loads, the impedance become complex, this switcher does not go unstable. It'll remain stable for any capacitive load that's added beyond the local regulator. This is a chart of the Super Switcher 2 family and what's available today. The parts span input voltage ranges up from the 26 volt to 75 volt range and output currents from 5 to 12 amps. One interesting thing of note is that they are all in the same 5x6 QFN package. 
There are different options available in some of these, such as the power good output. Some of the parts have an internal VDD. This is an internal 5 volt reference to run the part. Others don't have the 5 volt VDD. It's very useful sometimes if you have multiple supplies to have just a single bulk VDD to improve your efficiency and that's why we have these different families. There are parts also that have this HLL mode. This is hyper light load. We'll have another presentation that covers hyper light load, low Q, and some of the other features that we put into our regulators. We'll cover that in another time. This is a snapshot of a MIC 261201 eval board. This is our 12 amp switcher integrated MOSFETs. Here's your inductor. These are the input capacitors and the output capacitors. Uh, efficiency curves are shown here on the right. Um, this large capacitor that's on the input is just there because this is a test board and a lot of times we have 18 inch leads running to power supplies and we just want to make sure the input power is clean as it comes in there. You wouldn't need this in your final design. Um, this all takes place in about one square inch right here for a 12 amp regulator. It's a very cost effective, very dense solution. We also have simulation tools available for all of these devices. This is a screenshot just showing the schematic in our web sim tool. This is results out of the web sim tool just showing you what is possible. In the future we'll be putting together other videos showing how hyperlight load works and some of the other features in our other regulators. Meanwhile, if you need some help with the Super Switcher 2 and designing it into your circuit, contact your local sales rep, local Micrel FAE, or local distributor. Thanks for your time.